sure I'm in the right spot. Give this a moment to catch up. I think I'm one minute early. Okay, I think I've got it. Are we working? <clears throat> Hopefully I can see comments today, so please say hello when you come on. I am Susan with The Withered Barn in Idaho. And two weeks ago, we did a smaller project for my Rustic Elegance um, gallery wall in my hallway, eight by tens. Today, I'm doing a large 24 by 36. And hopefully you saw the, um, the preview image. Hi, Gina. I can see comments. It's a good day. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, Susan. Great name. Hey, Tracy, what's up? So first thing I'm gonna do is um, lift the camera because I want you guys to be able to see the entire project because again, it is large and I'm hoping we can get through it um, in the 40, 45 minute timeline. So let me go ahead and jump that camera up and let's get started. Excuse the bouncing. I had to really find something to get high enough on here. That looks pretty good, right? Okay, let me move the laptop out of the way. And slide these things out of the way. Let me first show you my frame. It's just a frame that I bought from um, the craft store. And of course, I always do them when they're half off. And it's a rustic wood frame. I think this one was 49 or 59 regular and so of course it was half off well worth it because it comes with the glass already it comes with the backing it comes with my sheet that I'm going to use so you can do this same technique with any size frame but this one's pretty big so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over get my handy dandy screwdriver yeah, $59.99 is what it was. So I paid $30 for the frame. So I'm gonna pull my little tabs up and I'm hoping I can get a full start to finish project for you guys. Because I know when we have time restraints and we gotta cut certain pieces out, it doesn't give you an idea of the full project. Okay. And these are just little metal prongs. I'm gonna lift a corner. I'm not gonna be taking the mirror out. I'm leaving it in. But I'm gonna lift a corner. Oh, there's a piece of tape, hold on. I'm gonna lift a corner just to get my cardboard out, my cardboard backing, and my paper. I'm gonna move my cardboard out of the way. I'm gonna try not to wrinkle my paper because this is what I'm gonna do my project on. I use everything. So I'm gonna leave my mirror in here. I'm gonna move my paper aside for now. <clears throat> and I'm gonna take this glass and we're gonna age it just a tad. So I'm gonna use my water bottle and I'm just gonna squirt in the corners where I don't want my paint to stick as much. And a little bit in the middle, very little bit. I'm gonna take the looking glass mirror spray. I've got my bands on and we're not using a whole lot, so we're gonna be just fine. That's it, I'm almost empty it looks like. And I'm gonna lightly do my corners. Let's see, nothing's coming out of it. There we go. And you don't want a lot. The trick is not to overdo it because you don't want it to look painted, you want it to look aged. And the cool thing is, is if you get too much in any one spot, you can wipe it off. I just put a little bit of vinegar on my paper towel 
and, and it scrubs right off. Let me hold this up a little bit. More. Okay. So that's all I put on. You can see there's like hardly anything on there. <clears throat> now I'm going to take a plastic bag, and there's many, many techniques on how to do this, but this is the way I do it. I turn it inside out so my um, ink will not bleed out onto my paint, and I just wad it up, and that's going to give me my little holes <clears throat> where my second paint color is going to come through. So if you see while I'm doing this, you can see some of the paint pulls back up. And you're putting that water spray on there so that your paint does not make contact with your surface and gives you that, that variation of mirror. So that's all I'm doing there. You can kind of see it all in here already. I'm going to just take a little paper towel because I got too much water and I don't want it to run. And I'm just going straight up and down. And this is just soaking up the water. If it pulls any of my paint off, I can spray a little more. Now in real time, I probably would have just left the water on there and let it air dry, but we don't have that luxury of time today. So now I'm gonna use a gold metallic paint. You can use a black gold color, you can use a hot pink metallic. Whatever my secondary color is, is what's gonna show through in my antiquing. Get my popsicle stick and I'm gonna apply this with a popsicle stick. And all I'm gonna do is just dribble it because we're gonna use our plastic again. And you don't wanna brush it because you don't wanna see brush strokes. Okay, that looks good. See, I didn't use hardly any. Uh-oh, looks like we're frozen. I hope we're not frozen on your end. Bridget, I sprayed looking glass mirror spray. You can use any metallic spray to do this, and it'll still look antique. Hi, Melanie. Hi, Teresa. Hi, I'm assuming it's Angela, it says James and Angela. How are you guys doing today? Hi, Linda. So now, before my um, gold metallic dries, I'm gonna just start daubing. Let me hold my, with my glass so that it doesn't. And all I'm doing is distributing that Golden metallic. And a little bit goes a long way when you're adding your second color. You can do a full glass or you can just do the edges like I do because I actually want my project to show through. I'll flip it over here in just a second. I can see I got too much paint down here. So I'm gonna have to wipe some of that up. Get my paper towel. Because I don't want gloss. Um, a little tip, I tried this with the dollar store frames, and you can do it, but the glass in those frames is so thin that they crack super easy. So please be careful. Okay, I'm gonna leave this like this. 
I'm going to let it dry. And we may have to tweak it just a little bit before we put our um, faux textile in there. But I like it. Looks good. Let me set this aside. Thank you, Suzanne. It's still showing frozen on my screen, but the comments are flowing through. So here's, I don't want my glass to fall out, so let me see here. There we go. So I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry. We'll just put it right there. So now I'm gonna take the backing that the picture came with. This is a good, heavy, poster type of backing. If it was thinner, I might not use it. I may just use my board, but this is good quality paper. So I'm going to paint directly onto this surface. And the way I'm doing mine, you can use whatever colors you want. I'm going to use a blue first, and then I'm going to fade off. So I'm going to wet my paper just lightly. These little misters are amazing. And you can see I didn't put hardly anything on my brush. to clean up. <laughs> Here we go. This is kind of a, um, I call it, a one pot meal. So you don't have so many different pieces to your project. It's just one. And I don't care if my paper shines through. I'm okay with that. And you don't want to saturate your paper where your paint just kind of falls through it, but just enough to where your paint kind of flows and is distributed. worried about the lines or anything that's going to give it kind of its aged textile look. back and forth and blend it real good. It's almost like you're painting on a canvas. Okay. So that looks good. I know to you guys you're going, um, that's hideous. And I'm going to try to go out of my screen and back in on this other. <clears throat> Internet's being finicky because we have tremendous fog this morning. Hi, Debbie. Hello, Els from Scotland. I hope I said your name right. So it's already drying. This is a, a paint that dries really quick, like most chalk paints. And now I'm going to use that same gold metallic. 
and I'm actually gonna water it down a little bit because I don't want it really thick. And I've only got a little bit in here. I'm gonna mix it up. Set that aside. I'm gonna use my same brush. I'm gonna get a different angle here. I'm gonna do this bottom portion. You can see it's really runny. I'm just gonna do the same kind of technique I just did up here with the blue. Overlapping them. Okay, I'm going to slide down now and do another section. And you'll notice the blue is coming off my brush, so my gold now is going to start being more of a gold. And you can do this with any color metallics, whatever your aesthetic is or the project you're working on. I just really wanted a deep um, gold tone, kind of a French textile. Okay, I'm going to slide up and do this piece right here very lightly. background for the transfers. Put the lid on, <clears throat> that out of the way. I'm going to shoot it with a blow dryer real quick. It's going to dry pretty quickly. <laughs> and we can get started on the transfers. It's already dry to the touch, but I can feel it's cool, which means it's not dry all the way through. You can see it feels like cloth. Okay, I'm going to set that aside. Let it allow it to dry a little more. It's already dry, but look how pretty that is. And this is just the paper that came with my frame. So if you've got a good quality paper, use it. So this is what we'll be putting our, um, our florals and our label infomera on. So I'm gonna move that aside. I'll leave this up here because I'm gonna use, use it for rubbing. So I'm gonna put, I want my words on the top. So I'm gonna put the IOD transfer um, wallflower down first. I've opened it up and they're super easy to um, cut up and redesign them if you will. They've got their protective backing. Try not to touch the colored areas with your fingers because the debris from your fingers will stick and then your image won't stick to your project but they come with these great grids, which when you're cutting your pieces up is amazing. So I know I want these on the edges, but I want this brought to one end. So I am going to cut out my edges. These are not my good scissors. I can tell immediately that one of my kids has probably used this on something like wire or who knows what. So I'm gonna have to be a little more careful. I'm just coming around the little rosebud. 
And the great thing is, if I mess up cutting it, it's easy to hide and make it look like it should be that way. Making sure my backing stays on to protect it. Again, just cutting out my edges. is the finicky fox. So shout out to anybody that knows what I'm talking about when I say finicky fox. Okay, I'm gonna bring my paper back up. Feels good, I don't feel any wet spots. It's a little bit cold right here. Let me shoot that in. this one to the side and we're going to work on this one first. I'm going to carefully take my backing off, lining up my transfer and giving it a little bit of pressure to help it stick. Got my applicator tool that comes in your tube. Start on the edge. <clears throat> and you can take your projects down until you're more comfortable with the application process using painter's tape. So you can see this is bright and now this is kind of dulled out. It's because it actually has stuck to my surface. I'm doing it this way it helps to rub one direction and sometimes if I go the other direction it really starts to lift transfers up is a little easier if you're say doing furniture because you can manipulate it a little easier than a full sheet because once you've committed to an area you got to kind of leave it there it's very difficult to pull it back up because it does have that um, little bit of adhesion on there Be careful on my edges not to hit my little faux tapestry here. But I think I'm going to have to 
get a little air bubble going. Here we go. And what I mean by a little air bubble, I just fold it over and it gives me a little air pocket under there where I can kind of push it onto my project. Doesn't work every time, but it does work most of the time. Get a little bump in here. Here we go. Watching my edges so I don't scratch my. Ready? Here we go. Look at that. It looks like fabric, guys. Isn't that pretty? So I'm just going to check with my fingers, no lotion. Check with my fingers and make sure I've got it all adhered. No air bubbles, any little kinks. I press them out with my fingers. Let's start on the next one. Uh, Cheyenne, I'm doing this one on the sheet instead of the glass. So I get a little more professional look. It'll be in my living room and I wanna be able to clean the glass off. And if I put this on the top of the glass, then I have to, um, in order to clean it well, um, I will have to use, you know, Windex or water or something and I don't want it to break my transfer down. So this is an easy way to do that so the glass goes right on top. And it's more of a, a professional finished look with the glass. So how are we on time? Um, huh, I can't see the time, guys. So I may use get my label um, Infamera out and show you guys at least a half of it. Or maybe, actually, I think I'll just switch over to my page, the Withered Barn Boutique, and finish the entire thing. That way you guys can see it start to finish. Okay, I'm going to, this one's being a little stubborn, so I'm going to fold it just a tiny bit, which gives me that little air bubble under there, and then I can kind of go with it. Those air bubbles are amazing. Just make sure when you're rubbing on furniture, don't use your edge because you will gouge it. It's got to be a flat motion. Making sure I get all my flour off of there. This is where I said going the opposite direction does help sometimes. Okay, so here's this one. Isn't that beautiful? Can you guys see it? It's beautiful. I love it. So I'm going to rotate my sheet. We're going to come this direction. right on going all the way around and I'm not going right up against the edge because I got my frame that'll hide it I'm gonna start on my small side here so I can get my little air bubble going give you guys some time You see right here, it's kinked up on me and that's okay. I just have to pay attention to my flower a little more to get it off the right direction so it doesn't fold up under me. Go 
wing it again just to get my air bubble going. So great too about the IOD, we can um, recompose them into whatever we want, or just use just a rose or just a flower in one specific spot. We can layer them with the stamps, with the molds, they all work together. recommend if you're just starting out don't start with a giant one unless you're going to cut it up into smaller projects start with a smaller one and get comfortable with it last thing I would want is for you to get frustrated and just not do it because it's so fun and it has multiple embellishing uses So this one, this is going to be my top on this one. So now I have to decide how I want my center. And overlapping is just fine. I think I'm going to go right there. Right there. That looks good. Somebody mention how we are on time. Can't wait to see all this framed up. Um, Lisa, thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. If you like what you're seeing, share, share, share. Show me some love. I also want to see you guys do these projects and then tag the Withered Barn and tag IOD and post them. We don't want anybody intimidated by these beautiful large transfers. And I'm not saying they're super easy. They just take a little bit of time. And they are so worth it. So worth it. The IOD sisters Put in so much thought and love into their designs. So right here is one going over another. And when I add the label Infamera onto the top of this, oh, such a beautiful vintagey look. Michelle, if you're still on here, how are we doing on time? I need to get me one of those little, um, you know, a cute little egg timer. Or like for the kids, the toothbrush timer. And you can 
see once I once I get going, it goes quicker and quicker and quicker. Because you kind of get get the feel for it, the knack for it. I'm paying attention to my edges because I'm I don't want to rub off my textile look. Again, I'm folding it a little bit, getting a little bit of a bubble going. Kind of speed it along. I'm turn it this direction so I can get another angle. This rub and whoo the workout and I just turned my heater up because it got so cold outside wrong thing to do when you're in your 50s <laughs> Attention to my edges. I don't want to scrape my faux fabric. Okay, is that all of it? Nope, this one right here. Here's the last of it. Ta -da! Are we ready? Okay, here we go. Drum roll. Doesn't it look like an old tapestry? I love it. So real quick, let me get this on here because I know we're running out of time. Here is the label Infamera, and it's like uh, vintage ads, um, catalogs, seed catalogs, entomology, it's got a little bit of everything on there. So let me turn it this way because this is the way I was going to apply it, except I'm putting market at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that off because my other one has marked at the top, and I want them to match, but not be matchy-matchy. So I am going to put this on the top, and this will go at the bottom, just like that. So that's what we're doing. Oh, thank you, Sir Jane, for posting that, for the link. Hi, Kenes. I put the transfer right on, let me answer your question real quick, right on my frames insert. You know the little generic insert that comes with frames? It's a good, heavy quality poster paper. And so I painted that, added my um, golden metallic over it, let it dry and put the transfer directly on that paper, and it gives me this beautiful tapestry look. I'm obsessed with it, it's my new thing. So this is how this one's gonna go. I won't rub the entire transfer, so you don't have time, but I will place it so you guys can kinda see. And then I'll finish it off over on my page for those of you that want to see the the finished project in the frame. And then this one, the market. I'm going to take that one off and we moved it to the bottom. And again, the grids are amazing because I can reline it back up without having to even think. So here is what it's gonna look like. 
minus the grids. Isn't that beautiful? So this is gonna go in my rustic wood frame right there. So I hope you guys, I can't even get down here to show. I hope you guys do these projects. Start with an eight by 10 frame, work your way up. You can even do them on um, plywood boards and make your own frame. Um, you can do a more elegant frame, love, love. Big, heavy gold, that'd be beautiful. So uh, thank you guys for joining me. Be sure to watch for next Tuesday. And um, you guys have a great Tuesday. Bye.